So today I'm talking about renewing our minds. It is Palm Sunday, but the Lord led me to this and then woke me up in the middle of the night to redesign my sermon. So breakdown, God waking me up in the middle of the night, he must want to say something. So today we're reading these verses, short um, scripture from Romans chapter 12. And I've translated this, I'll be slightly different to yours, but it'll be very similar because the translations are all good. Because there's multiple ways you can translate Greek words and things. Therefore I exhort you, brothers and sisters, through the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your rational service. And do not be conformed to this present age, but be transformed in the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is good and pleasing and what is the good and pleasing and perfect will of God. I'm just going to scroll through this passage now. It starts with therefore. When you're studying your Bible, and my message today is a one-line message, live by the word, not the world. That's my message today. Look for the little words, the, the joining words. This is a therefore that takes us back through all of what Romans has said. And Romans is a rich meal of God's uh, goodness to us. It's all about grace, saved by faith, not by works. We're not saved to become legalists, judgmental people striving to please God. He has saved us by the work of Jesus. And then he talks about receiving the Spirit and living in Christ, being free to live as slaves of Christ, which is the greatest honor in the universe, right? And then he's got all that stuff about Israel in Romans 9 to 11, and then he declares, therefore, and he exhorts them, I exhort you. That's a Greek word that means to come alongside and encourage. Come alongside para kaleo, to call a person, to summon them, to get alongside. You can put urge, encourage, etc., etc. And notice he addresses them as far now, as family. We're brothers and sisters of Paul and Jesus, children of God. So he's addressing them as his people brothers and sisters, through the mercies of God. So it's like here he's kind of talking about Jesus here. Who is the mercy of God? Through him and all that he's done for us, through God. The Trinity, as Dan so beautifully led us through as we worship this morning, through that to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. It's going to jump about five slides now, isn't it? There it is. And now I've jumped one. <laughs> Where do I hold it best? Probably up there. To present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This should speak to us at Easter. And this should speak to us after communion. Because Jesus showed us what that looks like. As his body, given in service to God through his whole life of service and hard work, was beaten up and broken on the cross as a living sacrifice that died for us. Where to do that? Where, whoever we are, whatever brokenness we carry, emotional, mental, relational, you know, we're all wounded healers. We're all struggling. We present it to God as a living sacrifice. And it's holy and pleasing to him. He delights in that because we're his people. And so we serve him. Which is your, and in Greek, this is an interesting word, it's logikos, from which we get logic. So it's not your spiritual act of worship, which is an unusual translation. It's your rational, it's the right thing to do. It's your true response to God, is to present your bodies. That's what we should do when we know who God is and what he's done for us. That should be our natural, logical reaction. And then we get to the bit that I'm focusing on today. Do not be conformed. And that Greek word has the word scheme in it. See? S-C-H-E-M. Do not be conformed to the schemes of the world. This present age, we live in the age between now and when Jesus returns. In fact, it goes back to the fall. I'll mention that a little bit later. And be transformed, metamorphosis. We all know biology and the way a butterfly emerges from a chrysalis, right? It's that. Be transformed, be new. Die to yourself and be the person. In the renewing of your minds, now for Greeks, and sorry, for Jews, this is your whole being. This is the center of everything. We know that biologically to be true now, don't we? The Greeks separated the heart and the, uh, the head and the mind. Uh, the head and the heart, sorry. We don't. Paul here is thinking everything about you. You're, you're thinking, you're feeling, being renewed. Who you are in your very essence. 
Why? So that you may discern what is the good and pleasing and perfect will of God. Notice it says, so that as you're transformed, then you can. Because you've been transformed, so you start to make right decisions intuitively. You don't even know you're doing it because God is so in you and you are so changed. All right, moving on from the passage. There it is. That's what I'm focusing on today. Be transformed in the renewing of our minds. But Mark, what does that mean? How do we do that? What do I have to do to be a person like that? Because I know you believe in the word and you want to be those people. And that's a great question. In fact, I think this is one of the greatest questions that faces the church today. Because the world is invading. It's coming in and wanting us to change our theologies. And be different so that we can line up with them. We've had protests in Auckland recently about this sort of stuff. We know this stuff. It's where we are. So that's a great question. And in some ways it is the question. How can the journey which God led uh, Terry and the team to plant, be a church that stands against the forces of the world. So what are we being transformed from? We're being transformed from people who conform to this present age. The world is around us and it's sucking at us and it's pulling us through our devices as we watch and we read stuff. Now, in the Bible, this refers to the fallen age that goes back from Adam and Eve when they ate the forbidden fruit. And it's an age where the world is under spiritual powers, demons, evil spirits seeking to corrupt every good thing that God has put in place. As New Zealand is turning away from God over the many years, you know, the last 20, 50, 60, 70 years, we're seeing what happens in Romans 1 play out. God gave them over. Our society is changing. It was never fully Christian. There's no such thing as a Christian nation. There's only Christian people in churches. But it was very Christianized, but it's changing. And we have to be alert to see what we're not to be so that we know what we are to be. So it's an age of sin whereby people live out of their desires and not the love for God, for others in creation. It's an age of idolatries, of the worship of things and not God. In our times, money, greed, pleasure, and the wealthy get richer and oppress the poor. These are the things that are going on. There's isms everywhere. There's uh, all sorts of new isms now. You can't be homophobic. You can't be anti-trans. You've got to, you know, you're being conformed to a particular type of person. We already knew about racism and sexism and these things, but there's new isms everywhere. But at its essence, it's a heart of self. It's about me, me, me. And that's what it's become. In the center of the word sin, and I know Jerry says this, is the letter I, isn't it? It's an age of the flesh. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh. Please my desires. And please government, give me more so I can please my desires. These are the sort of things we've got. It's an age of the world, the world, the world. Do it the way the world likes. Now, the Bible's a bit funny about the world because the Bible loves the world. God loves the world. But not in its fallen state because our world is corrupted. We're talking about that type of thing. It's an age of lust, 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 which is really just another word for desire. I want more, Lord. I want more. So we, are, we see and feel this every day as we hear the news, don't we? We can feel it sucking on us and pulling us away from the gospel. Even our own families, sometimes there's people in our families going through things and we feel that pull. In the church, the church has for centuries faced liberalism. And you no doubt know about sort of evangelicalism and liberalism. Well, there's a new liberalism that's emerging at the moment where independent charismatic churches are beginning to change their theologies because they believe that that's what they should do. I'm from the Presbyterian church. When you go to a Presby church, you don't know what you're going into. You might be going into a traditional old hymnic church or an evangelical church that passionately believes in Jesus, like the one I was in, which was charismatic as well, or you might be going into something that's going into weird ideas. It's a tragedy. The world is screaming to us that we are outdated. Even the church is being invaded. Yesterday I sent to you, Terry, did you see that video I sent you yesterday? I sent him a video, and he'll get to watch it, of a Dr. Aaron Edwards from Cliff College who's been fired from an evangelical college for saying that he felt that homosexuality was invading the church and the church has to stand against it. Evangelical college has booted him out. And there's a guy called Bernard Randall 
who is a chaplain in a school that's lost his job because he spoke up for the gospel in the era of sexuality. Don't be surprised. 2 Timothy 3 says this. Uh, people will surround them with those who say what their itching ears want to hear. This is a mark of the end times as we head towards the return of Christ. Now, this age ends when Jesus has been declared to the whole world and he comes back. So we're in this age and we're to be people who are transformed. So that's what we're transformed from. Having a bit of trouble with this, Cherry. We're going to have to get our technology sorted. But now we're being transformed into something else. We're God's people. We live in the new age of God. Where heaven and the, the end has broken in, in the person of Jesus, who was the Son of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, died and rose again, and now by the Spirit, the Spirit is invaded. But the Spirit is gentle and gracious and will only go where he, the Spirit is welcomed. So when you became a Christian, he flooded your soul. And he's in us, and so we look forward to that day when the world is fully transformed. We're living in an age when sin has been undone. We're no longer under its power. We have the power of God to live differently. It is feasible. It is possible. We're living in the age where the Spirit is undoing the powers of darkness. Evil spirits now have the Holy Spirit to contend with over our lives and over our churches. He's living in us. He's working with us. He's saving people, and he's transforming the world. We're in a, an amazing time to be alive. What a blessing. What an honor to be part of this. So now it's possible to love God, to love others as we should in creation, to have those relationships because they were all broken when Adam and Eve sinned. We're having fun today. So by the Spirit, <laughs> be patient, Mark. We renounce all idolatry and all greed and all lust and we live differently. That's what we're being trans into transformed into people of renewed minds. So look at this passage here, Romans 8, 29. Because those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That's what we're being transformed to. That's what he's talking about here. To be more and more like Jesus. So that Jesus would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And we're brothers and sisters of Jesus. He's our big brother and by his power is transforming us to be more like him. Conformed to be like Jesus, who is the Im image of the invisible God, the new Adam undoing what the old Adam did, and we are becoming that person. We could say he's undoing what Eve did as well, because it's not just about males, is it? The gospel is for women. Thank God. Imagine if we were all just men here today. How boring would that be? By the Spirit, we overcome the desires of the flesh and the pull of the world. We stop living for me, 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 we live for he, 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 for we, 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 and for thee, thee, thee. You get that? We stop living for me, me, me. We live for he, he, he. We live for we, 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 and we live for thee, thee, thee. That's the transformation that's going on inside us. This is what I got woken up in the middle of the night. This is what you do in the middle of the night. But how are we to do this? How do we do this in this age? How do we do it? Well, it's all in the letter L. And now I'm going to have a bit of fun with words. Or it's all in maths. Anybody like maths? Well, you like me. You hate it at school, right? You mathematicians will enjoy that. Maths upholds the universe, isn't it? Mathematicians know this. Everything's mathematical. It's in the equation world minus L equals word. There's an L in world. So the problem with the world is L. The prob our problem is L. And what does L signify? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. We're no longer to be people of the world. We're to be people of the word. And we've got to read it and study it like we never have before with our eye on the world to say, Lord, what are you saying? Like we never have before. This is the key to being transformed, to be a person of the word. I have never met a great Christian who's done great things for God who wasn't a person of the word. I was thinking about that last night. I never met one. They'll have different interpretations, but they'll believe in it, and they'll live it, and they'll love others as they do it. So how? Keep immersing yourself in this thing. Live in it. Get into it. Look what Paul says in, twice in 2 Timothy. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, 
rightly handling the word of truth. That's a cool Greek word, which means not putting anything in the way of the word. It's got this idea of orthohodos, which means to cut a straight path for the word. Orthotomio, actually. I think I've got the wrong Greek there. So, and he also says that all scripture is God breathed. When God breathed on Adam, he came alive. That's the spirit. When Jesus breathed on us and John, or the disciples in John 20, they received the Holy Spirit. The spirit has breathed on them. These are spirit breathed. This ain't just a book. This is something else. It is a book, though. It's not a divine book. It's also a human book. It's not just a divine book. It's also a human book. So we can read it from a word of God point of view, but also we can study the people and places and we can learn. Just like Jesus is fully human and fully God, scriptures are too. Doing this is the key to unlocking how to be people of the world, of the, of the, of the word that should say, not the world. To not live for me, he, we live for he, we live for we, we live for thee. That's what we're to do. We're to be completely new people. We're told in John's gospel that Jesus is the word. And now it gets fun. Because he came amongst us and incarnated and was enfleshed amongst us. He was like us. What if God were one of us? Well, he, he was. Is and will be the word of God in the world. So the word, the scriptures, are intimately and spiritually linked to the person of Jesus. He's the key, but you meet him through scripture. That's where you meet Jesus. God gave us this book. He closed the canon and said, that's how you will meet me. And he will speak to you too by his spirit, dynamically and wonderfully, but it will be in line with this. It will not be separate from this. This is our canon. So he wrote the scriptures. Well, what happened there? Oh, now we're going back. Oh, it's working really well now. He wrote the scriptures. Now, that sounds strange because Paul wrote the scriptures. The spirit was hovering over Paul as he wrote. Or better, the father, through Jesus, by the spirit, through Paul, was writing. He filled the writers who penned them with the spirit and guided their hands so that every word in his word is the word and takes you to the word. Not every therefore, every and. Now, at creation, he hovered over the waters. As the word was written, he, he hovered. But as the Jewish leaders, about 100 years before Jesus, got together and prayed and talked about which bits would be left in the Old Testament, which bits would be taken out, God hovered there and they chose the 39 books of the Old Testament. Not the Apocrypha. That's what the Catholics tell us. No. So as he hovered over that meeting, they declared sacred the 39 books of the Old Testament that tell his story of creation, fall, and redemption. They look forward to Jesus. The whole Old Testament is looking forward to that moment when the Spirit would see, uh, when Jesus would come. He also hovered over the early church as they argued and discussed which book should be included in the New Testament. Absolutely. So he was over the whole process. And as he hovered, they declared sacred the 27 books of the New Testament. And they continue the story of Jesus, his death, his resurrection, his life, his miracles, the spirit falling at Pentecost, the church, the mission of God going out into the world, the return of Christ, the judgment and the new heavens and earth. It's all there. And it all links back to the Old Testament. So we have the written word, the Bible, authored by God through his son, by the spirit. The world may change, but God's word never changes. It never changes. It endures forever, the same yesterday, today, and forever like Jesus. And so we don't need to go look for fresh revelation. We need to go back to the word and ask the questions our society is answering them, and we live them out. They're his written word through whom, through which, sorry, we meet the living word. Or better, he meets us. You have an encounter with God every time you open the scriptures, even when you're half asleep and not reading it properly. He transforms us. So it's the key. If you want to be a better Christian, be a person of the word. As we read it, we meet the living word through the written word. That's what happens. He transforms our minds, which, as I said before, for Paul, is our whole beings are transformed. Our minds, our thinking, our hearts, our feeling, our being, our self-awareness is all changed. And even our bodies, because our, what we're thinking and are ah, affects our bodies. And so you meet these old saints who get up at church and pick up a guitar and lead worship. 
So you, what are you doing there for, old man? And we get a guy like this going to Papua New Guinea for a week. What are you doing, boy? And his body is sustained by the power of God because he's in his heart. He become, we become more and more like him, less me, 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 and more of he, he, he. I can hear Satan weeping and the father laughing. <laughs> See the play on words there. Sorry about that. This is what happens when you get up in the middle of the night and write a sermon. Now in John, Jesus is the living water. So we can think about the word as something we drink. You drink Jesus, the living water, when you read this, like the Samaritan woman did. Now we're 60% water, but we're polluted by the world that's getting into us and infecting us. It's not just a green problem out there. It's a green problem in who we are from the world. Well, we drink the word and we receive the eternal water of God. Jesus is the bread of life. So we have another image, and we've just eaten communion, which reminds us of it too. As we read, our spiritual hungers are satiated. We will never hunger again. How cool is that? We become more and more like him as we eat. For we are what we eat, right? We know this. So get off the junk food and get on to the real food. Jesus is the light of the world. As we read... He lights our situation. He illuminates it. He shows us the path. The word is the light of the world, or better, the world. And we can put the word light in word, in, and you get world light. Change the L in world to light. That's okay. We can put the L back in. We're putting the light back in the world, and the word will become the world. One day the whole world will be a glowing place of God. It won't even need the sun and the moon. It'll have him. See, God, Jesus is the good shepherd who knows our names. As we read, he feeds us. He cares for us. He protects us. He defends us. That's what happens. And your soul is fortified to say crazy things at church, like when bad things happen, God is at work in its opportunity. See, that's crazy. That's an oxymoron. But it's true because he's no moron. Jesus is the gate. He lights the way. As we read, we enter deeper and deeper into God. You're in Christ, so you get deeper into who God is and into what he's doing with us, and you're more and more shaped into the image of God. That's what happens when you read Scripture. If you believe it and you get into it, Jesus is the vine in whom we abide. We are the branches. We're sustained by the sap of the Spirit that flows into us. And as we agreed, we're engrafted ever deeper into him. Beautiful metaphors. And what do we do? We produce grapes, the fruit of the Spirit, which is not for us. It's for others to come and eat. That's what happens when you're those people. So as I said earlier, it's all maths. Let me complete the equations with a few more. The world minus L equals the word. Word, brother. Well, world minus L equals the word. Word plus spirit equals transformed beings. If you add yourself into that, you're transformed, and you can put your name in that. We become the true me when we add JC to me, a person transformed by the Spirit who becomes an agent of transformation where you dwell and exist, your families, your workplaces, and with others. And what we do then is we live more and more for he and we and thee and less for me, me, me. So we become shaped into the image of God more and more. That's why when you meet an old Christian who's dwelled in scriptures for years, you can feel it in them. Demons hate that. They shudder and the world is transformed. The word plus the spirit equals transformed doing. I've talked a lot about reading the word and being, but we've got to now do it. James 1 says, do not look into the word and not go away and do it. This is where the rubber hits the road. But how can we have the power to do that? The same Holy Spirit. Lord, move me from my inertia. The Western church has inertia. It needs to be moved, and only God can do it. We trust and we believe more, which is awesome, because we're saved by faith. We believe more. You're saved by faith. You persevere by faith. You, it's all you have to do to get to the end is to believe, and I'm talking authentic belief here. And if you're concerned about that, God will give you that faith. And faith comes through hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Yes, word plus spirit equals faith. And there it is. Faith comes through hearing the message. So if we stop reading the word and we stop looking for sources to feed our souls that are the word and in line with the word, we will die. Word plus spirit equals hope. 
We live out of faith, hope, and love. We're generated hope in us. We get this desire and optimism, positive worldview that says, despite what it looks like, God is in control. And we hope more, which is fantastic because we've got so much to look forward to. In this world, because we have the Holy Spirit in us guiding our lives, doing miracles and amazing things, but also in the world to come. Christians are people of faith and hope, and word plus spirit equals love. We love more, which is awesome, because God is love, and we are created by love, and we are saved by love, and we are reshaped by love. We're sent to love, and the world is changed by love. You want to love more, you want to hope more, you want to believe more, the word. Indeed, if we put the L back in the word word, not word lusted, we get the word we're loved. We can put the word love. And that's what the word does, is it transforms a world full of lust to a world full of love. That's what God's doing right now. That's why you're such a lovely church to visit. You know, even when I go on far too long, you're just still sitting there patiently putting up with me. Indeed, we are loved. The word loved me. And that's why I became a Christian and you too. And through me then, love starts to flow through the Holy Spirit to him to he, to we, and we love one another. And then it it flows out into the world. In fact, streams of living love flow from the belly of God's people. Right? John chapter 7, verse 37. The word plus spirit means transformed churches. And never in the history of the Western world has the Western world needed transformed, transformed churches who live on the word of God than ever before. We are in unprecedented times. I think it's not long before the church will be punished by secular society for its positions on various things. My college will be too, I'm sure. Well, as we imbibe the word, it changes us. We love one another. We're bound together by love in the vine as the body of Christ. We're healthy and we're vibrant and we be and do what the Son wants. We do it intuitively. But it also leads us to work. So we, it changes who we are, what we are to be. It changes what we do, but it flows out in work. Now, the word takes the L out of the world and replaces the D with the K, and we have word becoming work. You see, you just put a K where the D is. So the word leads to work, always. And the, what, the place we do it is in the world, and we do it by love. So world minus L equals word minus D equals were plus K equals work. See? You're going to go home and remember all this because it's easy, isn't it? You just can take the L out of word and you're going to have the word. That's why I did all this. And the Lord said to me, Mark, your sermon was way too complicated. They can go home and just remember this one thing, Mark. Living out of the world, living out of the word, not the world. Living out of the word and doing the work. Living out of the word and adding love into it and doing it like that. As we be the word and do the word, the world is changed. People are changed. That's why you're changed, because people in the past have done that in your lives. So word plus spirit equals transform humanity. God is not interested in the Christian church going out into the public world and yelling at everyone politically. I just believe that now, not at the moment. It's going to be grassroots Christianity like this and home groups and house churches and other things where there's just going to be this new movement. It's going to permeate like it did in the first century and we're going to renew the church from the inside out. It's not going to be done with great Presbyterian assemblies and things. I'm in the Presbyterian church. We've got more problems than you'll ever know. People become Christians and are transformed into the image of God. So word plus spirit equals a transformed world because God takes transformed people to transform the world. It'll be bit by bit. Family by family, relationship by relationship, small group by small group, woman's group by woman's group, men's group by men's group, cups of coffee in a cafe, driving in the Uber, talking about Jesus to a Hindu driver. That's how it's going to happen. But the key is this. This is the key. Get serious about the word. The church will grow and it will fill the world. And the whole world is changed by the word that produces faith, hope, love, and we do his work as his people. So, to conclude, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the word and spirit. Lay aside that stuff. Lay aside our addictions and temptations. We're no longer shaped by the world and its lusts. 
Be the people of the world with, with love in it. Make the L in world mean love, not lust. He, 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 we, 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 the, 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 not me, me, me. As we are the people of the world, it will produce faith, hope, and love. We don't have to try. It will flow from us. It will come out of us. And suddenly people will notice that we're different more and more. We're not the people of the me, 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 but the he, 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 for the we, 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 and the the, the, the. I've said that enough today. And we then delight in doing the work of God because we want to. That's the other thing that happens is you want to. And when you don't feel like it and you go back to the word, you get an uppercut, a gentle Jesus uppercut, which is actually a kiss on the cheek. And he says, go and do it again. So as we dine on the word daily, and I want you to really start a habit of dining on the word daily, we are transformed in this way. We, the world has changed. So we need to step away from our devices unless our devices are pushing us towards Jesus. We have to watch what, we, what, what we're watching. We have to watch what we read. We have to think seriously about it. Read the word. Listen to it. Meditate on it. Memorize it. Contemplate it. Reflect on it. Read and listen to it on audio uh, sources. Study it. Question it. Chew over it. Consider it. Discuss it. Pray over it. Whatever it takes. The Bible is a book. God chose to reveal himself in a book. We're going to do a lot of reading. So, four other things to remember. Read, be, do, share it. It's to be shared. This is not given to me. It's given for thee. And it's given for you. And it's given for them. So, we go from here, transform people to do God's work. More word equals more prayer, more being what God created us to be in his image and more sharing the gospel. More word takes the lust out of the world and the corruption and distortion that's filling our society today and it fuses love, God's love into it, not that other stuff, not that mushy nonsense, so that one day the word will become the world. That's what's going to happen. The world will be fully what God wanted it to be. And we'll be there with Jesus. So word plus spirit equals transformed. As we do the word, as we be the word, do the word and share the word, the world has changed. People become Christians and they're transformed more and more into the image of his son. It's fantastic. God's people of the word do the word. It changes us and we love one another. And the church becomes truly the body of Christ bound together by love in the vine. And is healthy and vibrant. Being and doing what God wants. I hope you got the message today. Live out of the word, not the world. And if you already are a person of the word, dig deeper. Look for great literature written by great Christian leaders that endorse, that is premised on the word and read their stuff. Grow. Get into groups and talk about it. Discuss it. Have home groups that still have the word at it. Some home groups are getting all lovey and cuddly, right? That's cool. But then have the word. Be people of the word. And don't believe you can't learn it, memorize it. You can't, you can. Because you can still play the guitar when you're 62. Like, like Dan here. All right. So, let me pray. Lord, that's enough. I've said enough, Lord. I think the message is through. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Fill us with a holy desire to read this. And by your spirit, Lord illuminate it to us. I pray people go home from here and open up the word and it's like a new book. Not because it is a new book, but because you give them the eyes to see the stuff that's in it that you want for us. Because you're going to speak personally to everyone in this room. Everyone in this room is going to hear different things. Same gospel, same God, same world, same life you want us to live, but we're going to see it differently. And Lord, help us to do it. May we not be just people who read the word or hear the word May we be a different church, a church that does it, but does it with love, not for selfish gain. And we worship you, Lord, with love. We worship, Lord, uh, we, we, we love each other and we build a f- fellowship of faith here where people say, by this, well, it's their love. That's what drew me to them. There, there's something going on. They are his disciples. And Lord, into the world. In Jesus' name. Amen.